Hi, Joe Glavin with City Floor Supply here on uh, Facebook Live and Instagram. And uh, today we're going to talk about the uh, Clark American Floor, uh, floor Crafter, the Epic, and the uh, 26 Vac. So we'll get started. The Floor Crafter's been out a while. Um, they've made some uh, changes this past year to the unit. So you can see it's powder coated. A um, couple of key points for the Floor Crafter, uh, and you can stop me if we're moving too fast. But on the Floor Crafter, it is um, already set up for dust collection, which is a two inch dust collection hose off the elbow. It does come with a standard bag horn if you want to run traditional um, dust bag. So, on the, uh, so on the floor crafter, real key points, the uh, transportation dolly, the unit, the thing that I'm spinning on right now is a uh, tremendous advantage with the floor crafter. Uh, keeps our wheels, our drum, everything that's gonna contact the wood floor when you get to the job site off of gravel, concrete, any debris, uh, not gonna get in the machine. Very easy to take and flip it up. Uh, it stays on the machine. So with essentially um, bicycle wing clips here. So it's a great unit. Uh, gets, keeps our wheels clean, which is real important. Uh, while I have it up, real quick, we've got a double rear wheel caster. So when you're traveling forward and that uh, lift the drum up, put it down, and bring it in reverse for that um, reverse cut. You're gonna spin independently and have a really nice, even transition coming back instead of what used to be a little hitch and dip, which could leave a drum mark uh, in the floor. So, really another nice design. Uh, the Floor Crafter runs its handle system here with a feather handle, uh, really comfortable, very uh, well designed. Again, smooth operation, moving forward, lifting up, coming back, releasing. Just couldn't be couldn't be any easier. It also allows us to not have our wrist right there, um, and we get to keep all uh, of our hands and palms facing forward. So it's a great feature. Uh, what they've done with the Floor Crafter has taken this handle tube assembly and they've brought it more vertical so that when you pull back on your cut, your traverse rear cut, uh, you're not lifting machine up. As this angle gets more obtuse this way to the machine, we have a tendency to pull up on the sander if we're right on top of it. Um, particularly when we get tired. You know, we want to get on top of the machine, use our hips. Uh, if we're not using a belt, we could pull up on the sander, leave some drum marks. This eliminates that, uh, another really good feature. The Floor Crafter uses a flat drum. So the sanding drum on the Floor Crafter does not have a crown to it. Um, so we get a very nice, clean, flat cut. You can see that the entire top roller unit is casted with steel guide rollers. We get to adjust this unit on the outside so we don't have to take the belt on and off in order to do that, a very nice feature. So some really well thought out designs on this unit, yep. And then lastly, the motor. The motor on the Floor Crafter is American-made Valdor motor. And it's four horsepower continuous. I think it's, it peaks at six and a half horsepower. Um, the motor itself, probably one of the least uh, mo maintenance motors four sanders in the market. Um, it does have starting capacitors and Simpex switches and stuff in it, but they are 
uh, the, the overall design on the motor, totally enclosed, is really well done and a lot less maintenance than some of your other motors. Uh, taking the machine apart, very simple. We've got some uh, set screw thumb screws here. They come out. They have a uh, they have a metal internal metal sleeve, so it won't wear the aluminum. And then your belt, V belts, really easy. Pop right off. Probably the most well-designed motor removal system going. You know, really, really well done. Uh, I think that's it. The only other thing is the tension in the belt, the sanding belt inside. Um, there, some of the competitive machines, the tension is uh, on the belt is down. So some guys forget that. So um, they do put a decal on there to say for going, you know, green, going to sand, you want that tension on right. that belt there. And, uh, um, you know, as far as cost of maintenance, the, that Baldor motor it represents the least cost of maintenance. We do not see that Baldor motor in our shop. Uh, that's how, uh, you know, um, cost effective it is uh, with American electricity. So again, we're going to stand with this, but we're going to um, we're going to go ahead and talk about the vacuum and the Epic buffer. And then we'll turn them on and run them. So, for, oh, you know what? One more thing. This floor crafter is one of the only units to come with its own travel base. So you can actually bolt this into your van and not have to worry about it sliding around in the in the van. You can also uh, strap the machine. It comes with strap hook uh, areas, and then its own toolkit. And this toolkit can stay strapped to the Baldor motor with all the tools, everything you need for every nut and bolt. And Allen's uh, head screw on that machine comes here. All right, onto the back. So the AVAC 26 has uh, two two inch um, hoses totals at 20, uh, 50 feet and it has two inlets for uh, dust pickup. Uh, if you're only using one inlet, they come with a stopper to close off the other one. Uh, we've got some nice little features here. We've got large uh, gray non-marking wheels, very sturdy, as well as the swivel casters non-marking. While we're on this side of the machine, we have an external um, secondary filter, air filter here, which makes it easy to maintain. Um, we could just pop this off, change out the filter, and pop it back on. Uh, it does come with a connector to connect the two hoses if you're just using one length at 50 feet, which you can do with this unit. Um, main features for this guy, it is... Um, it's three motors, so there's three 800 watt motors in here, and they're on the bottom, and I'll show you the, the bottom of this and how it sits flat uh, in, a, in a second. So we're gonna, you're gonna turn this on in stages. Just about any vacuum that you have that has multiple vac motors in it, you're gonna turn on in stages. With three motors, you're looking at uh, 255 CFM and 72 inch water lift. Um, what you're gaining there with those three motors, the amount of power that when you talk about, uh, you know, 72 inch lift, you can put two machines on this vac uh, very easily. That is, you can work with a, a, a big machine and an edger uh, and then using two-inch hose requires some good CFM, but you can remove good stock uh, with the floor crafter and also uh, be using an edger 
uh, and have a, you know, a dust-free environment or, or significantly less dust um, rather than using, using a bag. And using two edgers is also uh, uh, a recommendation that is fine with this, uh, with this vac. So it comes with um, two filters. One is the um, debris bag that you see on the outside here. And you take this debris bag off and inside, this debris bag is inside this filter bag. So you can see we've been running it, testing it, make sure it runs right so we don't look like knuckleheads on here. Um, the unit is clean. You know, and that's probably had, I don't know, about 100 square feet uh, of worth of dust put in it. So, you know, again, uh, easy to remove those filter bags that fit inside the cotton filter. Uh, I guess I call it a pre-filter or three to a pack. And then we have this, uh, I guess it's polycarbonate maybe, um, dome here that we can see if we're full in there. Yes. Quick question, Joe, um, from Hudson Hardwood. Can you double up on both hoses to run one machine? Yes. Yeah, you can connect both hoses and um, run 50 feet. So you can see emptying it, easy. Um, accessing the bag, easy. Changing out the filters, easy. Um, they've really made it pretty much maintenance free, hassle free. Uh, we're gonna flip her over. And again, you know, a lot of people will say, hey, well that vacuum, one vacuum or another is too big for my van. It's too high, it's too um, awkward. You know, that's, that's a pretty low profile. Um, you can put, lay that vacuum down. Um, it's sturdy, the handle's meant to be a base. And then on the back side here, on the bottom, Uh, this is where we clean out our filters. Now, I'm not going to take all five screws off, but there is an air um, diffuser here that we can clean out as well. And then the three motors that pa are powered up for this unit are housed in here. So for our shop and the maintenance and repair of it, you know, it, it makes it that much easier. Um, we can access this bottom plate, pull this unit apart, change out motors. You know, you're looking at steel drum, uh, steel bottom, steel plates, just, you know, American made. Uh, what everybody thinks American made is, this, one, this unit is. Okay, anything else? No? So, this is the uh, Epic Buffer is somebody can correct me, Epoch, Epic. I'm assuming it's Epic. Um, obviously, what you see first of all is the LED light. Uh, real nice light. We got to see on the panel, and, and you'll see it as well. You know, it will show up. Any marks that are being created, um, you can turn it. Flexible, um, not drawing a whole lot of current because it's LED, uh, it's not hot. So great, it's integral part. Uh, it is switched. You can turn it on and off. Uh, real nice feature. Uh, it comes on when the buffer comes on or when the buffer's plugged in. So as with all of uh, Clark's units, we've got a steel handle tube. This unit does come ready for dust collection. So I'll flip it over, I'll show you that in a minute. Um, but we have nice, comfortable handle grips here. One of the key things about this unit is this is a 60 amp magnetic drive motor. Um, so this is DC that, what does that allow us to do? DC motors give us high torque. Um, we need high torque when we're driving something that's the hydrosand. So this buffer with the weight kit and the hydrosand is gonna weigh about 135 pounds. Uh, it is aggressive. You're gonna cut with this buffer 
on um, you know aggressive abrasives 36 40 50 60 with the switch in the high speed which is 300 rpms and we can get two speeds with this unit because of that motor that 60 amp magnetic drive motor we can rectify that speed and give us 175 and um, 300 so 175 is your standard speed you can use this buffer without the weight kit uh, without the weight kit and without the hydro sand attached to it you're about 95 pounds so um, it's a 25 pound kit so um, we go no on the on the uh, 175 speed and no plate kit it's a regular buffer you can run it with a screen disc sandpaper anything you want as soon as you put the hydro um, the hydro drive on and the weight kit you want to put this up at the 300 and and really sand with it now we're going to remove a lot of stock and so when we do that we're going to want to skirt it and we're going to want our vacuum assembly attached to it um, so again it's already set up for all of that uh, looks very similar in weight and feel when you're running it i don't know if anyone out there has run a sander 16 um, but the sander 16 from american sanders or clark american sanders was uh, their sanding unit like you would put a hard plate on that with a felt and aluminum back block and really sand the floor with it so the hydro sand i'm gonna flip it over and show it to you now um, Every other function is very similar to the RS-16 and the RS-16 DC from American Sanders. So large, the wheels are non-marking gray wheels, um, travel really well and smooth. Oh, that's one thing, the dust port for the hose here, uh, we're looking at inch and a half, and inch and a half hose, these hoses are two inch, so you will need adapter. Um, you will need to adapt into that. So this is the uh, hydro sand. So this unit can come with the hydro sand at one part number or just uh, the Epic without the hydro sand. So it's available both ways. Um, dust skirt comes with it, hoses, again, everything, weight kit. So the hydro sand, I think we did something on the hydro sand before, but I'll just go over it real quick. For multi-disc sanders, you know, this unit, it, it's a great unit. It's all steel, it has really good weight to it. Um, each one of these discs is in its own bearing drive. It has an independent shaft. Um, the clutch plate is metal. The drive plate itself is metal. Solid roller bearings uh, that are pressed on. So really well constructed. Again, you look at the floor crafter, you look at the Epic, you look at the vacuums. I mean, these are solidly built units. And the riser on this unit is, is really unique. It has uh, a dampening system in it. And the, this dampening system is solid rubber. If anybody's run um, OBS 18 and had to replace these, that's what gives the um, bounce back. It's almost like a spring on the, on the OBS 18, which is the 12 by 18 square buffer. This unit, anybody that's run multi-disc units, when you've got weight on that buffer and you're sanding with it with a low grit, you know, you're gonna get hop because uh, it, it wants to cut. And this damping system really does um, help keep it smooth. You're sure you're gonna get a little hop because it, again, it is trying to cut the floor, it's trying to get it flat and make it smooth. So if you have irregularities in the floor, it is gonna vibrate, but it's gonna vibrate a lot less with um, this system that's integral to it. So this all comes as one unit. It goes on just like any other drive block. And uh, 
I think that's it. We've got 60 grit on here in um, red heat. And, oh yeah, that's another thing. These discs, these five inch discs from Norton, you'll notice that there aren't any holes in them. Um, the no hole discs, no hole paper, uh, we're gonna get our dust collection all throughout this and this baffled unit here. And while we're skirted, that's gonna help us. So we don't need air infiltration because there are no holes in the back of these pads. So a solid sandpaper on these discs works well. Um, if you use paper that has multiple holes in it, like you would for your palm sander, you need that for dust collection. Um, you don't need that on these, on this hydro sand to do that. There are no holes in here. Um, what you will do is eventually um, tear up your Velcro. So just a tip. I was gonna say it was the floor crafter. Okay. Um, All right, so we're gonna cross cut this uh, uh, chevron pattern. Uh, we're gonna go, you know, obviously against the grain. And then this hallway was laid. Uh, no, the chevron and the oil, we're gonna use okay. this Okay, you're just gonna yeah, use the high sand. Okay, here. so we're just gonna run the floor crafter on this cross grain, and then we're gonna take the scratches out with uh, uh, the epoch. Uh, uh, Unless somebody buffer. wants to see something different, I mean, feel free to speak up. Um, we have 50, 60, 80, 100 grit discs um, that we can put on here. If you want to see something, you know, by all means, let us know. We're hoping that we're going to remove that gray oil uh, Yeah, this that is, has the craft oil on it. We're hoping we get that off at 60 on there, Joe. There's 60 on there. This is two coats of Bona Craft oil for the two-tone look. Right. Um, that they did at the Bona Certified Craftsman School. And then this is... Uh, uh, it's also craft oil, craft but, oil but it charcoal. does have It does have a finish on it as natural. Right, so this was so coated with natural. It has a finish on it, and then this too is uh, um, stained with finish on it. So, so you'll see that um, Epic cut with uh, finish, urethane finish floor, oil finish floor, which will essentially be like, you know, sanding off stain. And then you'll see it cut raw wood um, and, and see if we can show you cross grain scratches or any of those other things that might happen with it.
So you can see we did a full, we did a complete cross cut on that, right? You know, this is a hallway. Um, you know, I think this is a perfect time to bring in a unit like the Epic um, and we'll do a stand with it. So Mike, if you want to set up the Epic, we'll roll that out and then bring it in. Well, I'll get started here and then uh, I'll get started on this. Yep. All right, well this is on the, on the high speed here, high, which means uh, we're at, you see the H and the L, and we have the hydrosan set up with 60 grit, right Joe? 60 yeah, grit, 60 grit red heat, and uh, we're gonna uh, you know, grind it, taking off this oil. Uh, gotta turn the back on. wire brush uh, and water pop and then the craft oil put on it. So there's some deep penetration. But I'm just running this like I would a buffer. And you can see the vacuum is very effective. And you're putting a lot of torque and ability so if, if you were in a place of you know, working in a hallway where the big machine's not a, this is an excellent alternative to just bring your tiger stand out. And you can get very close to the wall. So when I get this set up, I'm going to put the skirt on it so that it's against the floor. And then, that way the floor is dictating the height of the skirt. Sorry. Like this? Yeah. Right now, I'm just looking to try and get color removal. And if I were to, you know, clock the buffer to try and get scratches out when I'm finding up, I'll clock the buffer and, uh, and work to get scratches out. Right now, I just know I have significant stock removal. Uh, to take place in order to get the color out, get the wire brush, uh, get it smooth. And what that person was referring to was moving ourselves with the grain of the wood, blocking the buffer a bit to help himself with removing scratches, which is a technique that you should be used when finding up. But right now, if you were big to this and have walls, and this was a hallway, that's why Mike was facing down the hallway. Um, and again, clocking the buffer to move to remove the most amount of scratches. Absolutely. Right now, we're trying to get color and finish off. job site it's going to dictate what grit progression you're going to use every job site is different whether it's new install or not so 
you know, I, I might even drop down to a 40 grit if I'm trying to get stock removal. Um, we'll forget down here where I cross grain cut that, those are some serious scratches. That was blaze that was on there. Um, we cross cut the grain. So we're gonna need an aggressive grit to get those scratches out. Um, and also get off some of that paint and finish that was mixed at the Bona Craftsman School. Um, and get it removed. Just putting 50 grit on, it can go a little quicker. But any scratch you put in, you got to take out. Great. to work our way up in grit so that we get those removed. One machine. This is also your, you know, for for recoat. You're buffing with this between coats. You're buffing. You just switch it down to 175. Put on your regular drive block, not the hydro sand, and you're using this as a buffer. So having a two-in-one capability with one machine that's 110, you know, plugging into 110 volts. That's a significant advantage in your truck. 
Brian is asking is screening after necessary with if you hide your stand with 100 grit? Uh, it depends. Uh, and I, uh, it depends for, you know, this, this species. And if I was on maple, for example, I would definitely say I am screening. If I'm on hickory and I'm prepping it for, for stain or this beach, uh, you probably could get away with on oak, uh, you know, not uh, putting a screen on it. So it just, it just depends. If you're going natural, uh, then no, you would probably wouldn't need to, to uh, uh, you know, screen after 100 grit. But if I was staining, um, there's you no know, probability. But I'm gonna get that light down and really investigate the scratch. Uh, but you can see here, now this had finish on it, as well as oil on this beach. And because it wasn't, this wasn't wire brush, it took that color out a lot easier. And this did have finish on it. So I'm in a hallway, you know, a pretty typical hallway. This had uh, oil finish and then a coat of uh, traffic natural on top of it. And this hydro sand definitely uh, made my work a lot easier in this hallway. Uh, so that floor, I mean, you can't feel it on Facebook, but that floor is flat. Um, yeah, you don't see this little sander jumping around. So, what we're going to do, uh, a couple we're going to go down here where the paint is. Um, this is a paint and finish. Uh, mix look down here again that was not sanded like the gray oil coat up here because this had the grain tore out of it for that look uh, this was sanded as normal so we're going to throw a 36 grit on down here and just see if it takes the paint off now let's see if it takes the paint off Here's a comment, you still need to water, says Jeff. Uh, yeah, if you want, water popping is a, a great technique for getting depth of color. So, uh, personally, uh, I like water popping for, uh, for stains. You can see a significant difference right here on this panel. This is water popped, this is not water popped. And you can see it's the same stain but you see the depth of color that there's a difference. And that depth of color is uh, achieved by water popping. Water popping also helps you with really fine scratches. So um, if there are, you know, fine scratches, and again, I will water pop and recommend water popping for all maple staining projects as well as hickory. Uh, you know, maybe it's not a necessity to do it on uh, white oak like we did here, but to get the depth of color water popping is a, uh, a good uh, a good technique when staining All right, we're all set turn up. Yep. Back on. So Joe changed out my disc to put 36 grid on Thank you. 
this is into a finish. hard to see it, but I mean that's the amount of material removed with the hydrosan. I mean it. So if we turn this off, let's see. Yeah, it's kind of hard to see how much, you know how empty or or not it is. But. Yeah, I can't see. It. Some gray stain and some black paint. That's everything. Yep. So what we reviewed today at Facebook Live were three uh, American Sanders uh, pieces of equipment. Uh, we believe solve problems. They should be in your truck. Uh, the a the American 26 vacuum is very powerful. 255 CFM will work to let you use two machines. And that's a, a critical point. With a two inch vac vacuum hose, 50 feet of two inch vacuum hose. Working with the new Epic uh, 16 inch dual speed buffer is like a, that two in one machine in your truck lets you have the capacity to use that Hyger sand as a tool to get stock removal, but also get scratches out and transition with your big machine and edger, and then also have a buffer between coats. If you're just padding and getting ready for that final finish coat, that's a, uh, an excellent piece of equipment. You know, take the weights off and use uh, the, and you can see those weights come off very easily. And then lastly, we detailed first the floor crafter. The floor crafter is an eight inch belt sander. Easy. That is very aggressive. It does wonderful with stock removal uh, as well as finish sanding. And then being a uh, compact machine set up for dust pickup with that split wheel in the back, it solves you know, a, a problem that some guys were having with other machines in the industry. The, the, there's no fishtail uh, on the back, uh, on the pullback. And having all the uh, electrical, American electrical components makes this machine probably the least expensive machine on the market to maintain. So in, you know, what you're spending on this machine in year 10 is a, is a competitive difference. Uh, Cause certainly, you know, in the floor sanding business, we know people that have machines for 
30 and 40 years and we see them in our shop and this machine as far as you know cost uh, to repair is probably the best on the market uh, you know it's a very uh, very well built piece of uh, equipment American made James says we should empty the vac well we will empty the vac James we know a lot about fire <laughs> trust me that vac will be empty today thank you though is it worth demoing that or we're good oh he wants us to empty it like that wasn't a cautionary uh, yeah. I, he just says empty it empty it you got it <laughs> Um, Mike, can you go to the janitor's closet and grab me a trash bag? So what I wanted to do was um, take this unit out and dump it. This is a reusable bag, so um, I just wanted to take this off and dump it out in the, in the trash bag. Of course, if you're in somebody's house, caution. So um, you can see this is the pre-filter. So we've got the vacuum bag, the pre-filter, and then inside we're still clean. So I would just flip this inside out. Get it clean. Told Mike on demo days, I usually wear khaki, so I don't see like a big dust ball. But That's it. Great. Where can we find these and more great products? You can find these and more great products at City Floor Supply or CityFloorSupply.com. Any other questions? Thanks, guys. Thank you.